Interesting. You think you know somebody, and then you learn all of a sudden that they have a crush on a Sesame Street character. This is Liz. Yeah, I do. I mean, that unibrow, wow. It's the Count from Sesame Street. Since she's been a little girl, she's like the Count I, on Sesame Street. I don't know why. He was my favorite character. Is it the way he counts? It could be the accent. You know, okay. I'm a sucker for an accent. So, yeah. I mean, he was just so cute. Now, Liz can do impersonations. Can you do this guy? Uh, let's see. Uh, a one and the two and the three. See, that's him. It's close. It's that's him. Close. Just a little deeper with the voice. Yeah. Scott, I'm hearing it was somebody from Mr. Rogers. I have never told anyone this. Oh, yay. But okay. when I was a kid, I had a crush on Lady Aberlin from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember she's, her? She's the one in, oh, what was the the imagination place? What was it? See, I don't know. In yeah, the she kingdom? had the dark, We're, dark curly hair. and she. Yeah, just but what's the very... name of the place that he goes to? Imagination Land or what is it? Station. Yeah. Imagination. What's it called? We don't know. I'm Drawing no, everybody's blank. drawing a blank. Okay, that's okay. But you know what I mean. About Lady Aberlin. Yeah. I don't know the name. <laughs> I felt like we were in a test. <laughs> I don't know. So, so it's Mr. Rogers, and then you have the Count. For Jake, who's one of our producers, it's what? Hey, dark hair girl. She looked like Shego. Uh, Shego from Kim Possible. She was the main villain. Kim Possible. You liked the villain. Yeah. On Kim Possible. Well, I mean, she had this beautiful, luxurious black hair and these big green eyes. Yeah, I see. And then Ninja. Oh, it was Meet the Robinsons? Who yeah, is it? It was like the oldest son from Meet the Robinsons, Wilbur. 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 See, I love that. I am I think I'm different because I've never, when I was, I didn't have a crush on like a, a childhood character from a TV really? series or anything like that. I had several. Yeah, the not camp? a cartoon and not a puppet. Not for me. What? That's... It's not. It was more like Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island. Well, I get that. You know, she was or cute as a button. Laura Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie. But it's still a character. Yeah, but not a cartoon. No, but it's still not a like... cartoon. Valerie Bertinelli when I was a teenager. Okay, now you're getting into just real Aaron people. Aaron Gray when in Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers. <laughs> she was gorgeous. Oh my. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. this is when I was a kid. They were all my girlfriends, but they didn't know it. But I mean, going back to Laura Ingalls, and then what was the other one you said? The character? Marianne. Marianne, that's yeah. right. The professor of Marianne. I get that. Totally. But they were characters. I was just a kid, and these were reruns on TV. Yeah, but it's that first, wow. Yeah. They're pretty. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Those childhood crushes from TV shows when you're just a wee little kid. It's Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio, Liz, was the Count from Sesame Street. I don't know why. A was... one, a two. <laughs> there you go. Did I even get it right? That I don't think close. so. It no, was I was not even close. <laughs> and then Mr. Rogers for Scott was Lady Who? Lady Aberlin. And the Imagination Place. I can't remember yep. the name of that whole Imagination Place. The Land. Oh my goodness, I've the lost something. it. Something, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we got a text from Michael. Michael said his crush was April O'Neill from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What? Yes, and she was cute. I get it. Josh said I actually liked Gadget off Chippendale Rescue Rangers and She Ra from He Man. <laughs> she Ra from He Man. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Eli, when uh, Little uh, said Elmo. Elmo. Elmo, the first All crush right. as a toddler. So wow. cute. Wow. Mary's here at 800-447-7234. What do you say, Mary? Mr. Rogers, and it was the land of make-believe. I know. Okay, that there was it. There it is. I was stuck in imagination, but land of make-believe. Land of make-believe. That was it. Yes. Okay, Mary, childhood crush from a kid's TV show. Oh. MacGyver, hands down. MacGyver. There you go. <laughs> MacGyver. You can fix yes. anything with a paper clip. Chewing gum. I can't think of his real name. Something Anderson, right? I think maybe Richard, but I'm not 100% sure. It's oh, well. Just, it's it's just MacGyver. It's just MacGyver. It's just MacGyver. The blonde MacGyver. hair. Yes. The, uh... <laughs> yes. And We're... he can fix everything. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. The childhood crush you had when you were just a little one. Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Uh, Brian texted and said, okay, my childhood crush was Topanga from Boy Meets World. And she was. She was a gorgeous young woman. So I get that. Debbie uh, texted and said, what about Sean Cassidy? Ooh, when that's he, a throwback. That is a throwback, Hardy Boys. Uh, she says, when he sang, I just melted. <laughs> 
that. You have some kind of ski jacket. Yeah, yeah. ski jacket just like his. Uh, Jess texted and said, okay, mine was Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement, also did the voice for the young Simba in Lion King. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Bethany's here at 800-447-7234. What about you, Bethany? Mine would probably have to be Bob the Builder. <laughs> and I actually married a construction worker. <laughs> ah, you, you grew up and married your own Bob the Builder. What's his name? His name is Clayton. Clayton the Builder. <laughs> what was the tool belt he was wearing when he met you? Um. Well, he wasn't in his construction uniform. He was actually off that day. And you knew, it sounds like, that he was a construction worker. I did. I did. And we talked for a while until we started dating. Recently, I just he just went back into construction. He took a break, but he just went back. And the other day, I finally saw him, and he was actually wearing a tool belt apron. <laughs> and it was, um, like, denim. And the man he worked for said, we haven't seen one of those in years. It was a throwback to Bob the Builder. That's it. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. New survival technique. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, and Jerry tested it out unwittingly. So what happened, he has a couple of homes. He has one in the mountains of California, one in Nevada. So he was leaving the mountain home. And there's a lot of snow. They've been having a lot of snow in California. So it's about a three-hour drive. So while he was at his mountain home, he stopped for a couple of things that he wanted to take back. Waters, you know, he got some croissants to take back to the family from a favorite bakery. Well, on his drive home, he gets stuck in the snow, very, very deep snow. He survived like eight, nine days on the water that he had in his car and croissants. Mm-hmm. He had croissants. Croissants. <laughs> if you're going to be stuck in the snow for eight days, you might as well survive off a croissant. Right. And and his family had said, okay, he's missing. Can you find him? And they got a ping finally after like a week um, from his cell phone or, or his watch or something and were able to find him. But he's in his 80s. Oh, no. I didn't yeah. know that. And he was able to survive on croissants. Scott has an idea of a survival technique. All right. So what I'm hearing is we need blankets, medications, water, and croissants. In every kit. Survival kit. In every kit. kit. Yeah. Just in Croissant case. Croissant is the new kit item. Yeah. Just in case you happen to break <laughs> down. So if I get a flat tire on the way home tonight, I'm breaking out the croissants. Yeah. And the flare. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. To dress up, you got to look expensive. And why not go to the bargain rack? It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, that's exactly what the guy who won Best Director over the weekend at the Oscars did. His name is Daniel, Daniel Scheinert, and he was the director for um, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I don't know anything about the movie, but this guy, he's a good Southerner. He went to baggage claim in his hometown, which is in Alabama, and he found a tuxedo and he bought it on the cheap. I heard that there are some of those places that are available. These are these are um, l- this is from luggage yes. that was never claimed. Claimed, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was, so it's the unclaimed stuff that right. they're selling like years later. Right for nothing. And the thing with tuxedos, they don't go out of fashion nearly as often. That's true. As dresses do for women. I mean, women's fashion changes it seems like every six minutes. But for the tuxedos, he bought it. It was a couple of years out of date. It was super cheap, and he wore it to the Oscars. Nobody knew. Evidently, it fit. Oh, it fit. And, you know, he's he's a, a thin guy. He's not overly tall. He's not, uh, you know, overly short. So, Average. Yeah. And so he was able to find something pretty cool. He had a pocket square. I mean, he had the whole thing, and it looked fantastic. Thrift stores, if you're not looking for something in particular, thrift stores is, is really good to find some stuff at. Yeah, I have found, like, especially if you, we went to a, a birthday party that I had, and it was 80s birthday party and so my daughter found her costume which was a prom dress from the 80s at a thrift store and it was five or eight dollars or something like that and it was original from the 80s so it was awesome my son was telling me about this place called bin time oh yeah and he bought a projector that you could put movies on like the side of your house or a sheet or something outside a movie type projector that you could just stream your computer through or something uh for Five bucks. Five dollars. Yeah, those things are like a hundred. Th- this one was one hundred eighty. Oh, 
online. Feeling. And so have you tried it out? Me? Well, you, I mean, have has your family? I've never been to bend time, no. No, have you tried out the projector? Like oh, it's yeah. Nice? You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So Janet lives next to this apartment complex, and a scary thing happened. A fire started mm. next door at that apartment complex. It started downstairs where there were some kids that were playing with a lighter, all of a sudden, it got out of control. The mattress catches on fire. It spreads upstairs to this unit, and it's black smoke everywhere. And as Janet is seeing all this stuff happen, all of a sudden, her house is close enough that her house catches on fire. Oh, no. Her one-year-old kid is in the bedroom stuck. Mm. This is scary. Fire department comes over. Here's one beautiful thing that happened during that whole time. The baby's safe, okay? The one-year-old is safe. But the dog inside that house would not leave that baby's side. Wow. That's amazing mm. that this dog stayed with, uh, what kind of dog? Like a pit bull or something like that? It's got four legs and <laughs> hair and, and ears and fur. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That the dog would sit there and protect. Because, I mean, quite honestly, you would expect an animal uh, fight or flight kind of a thing. Right? You would ex- think. You would expect that the dog would just take off. Survival instinct takes over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And faithful. Very, very faithful. Well, I know somebody that's getting extra kibble tonight. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Even if it's snowing outside, the pooch still needs to go outside and walk. I mean, they have to. You know, the dog needs to walk. So this woman is walking her dog, and then the dog starts to do something unusual. I mean, it's like over sniffing. It's like. <laughs> And so it goes off into another area and drags its owner along with the dog. And (laughs) the dog found, believe it or not, buried in the snow and an animal carrier, a cat. That breaks my heart. Right. Uh, What they think is that somebody actually did abandon the kitty cat in the, the little carrier. Like, put it in there maybe thinking, okay, it'll be safe. It's not going to be warm. I mean, you know, because... Doesn't have a little heater in there. No, and no it was gloves. buried in the snow. Yes. And so, you know, when you're walking by, you're not going to see it because Mm-mm. it's buried in the snow. But this dog sniffed it out. Yeah, and heard a little bit of a very faint meow the dog did. And then as the owner, of course, of the dog started kind of uh, shoveling or digging out the cat, started hearing the cat's meows. But they were fairly faint. Yeah. Now off at the uh, animal care place. And the kitten's name is now Paisley. Oh. Waiting to be adopted. And I think by now... It's probably adopted. Probably. It would have been hard to not go back and adopt that kitty cat. Right. But I'm actually glad the owner said, this is not something I can handle right now, but I'm going to get her to say You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Animatronics. So they have them at Chuck E. Cheese, and the whole technology behind it all is on a floppy disk. That's hilarious. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. It's hilarious that it still runs on a floppy disk. I honestly thought technology had come uh, so forward that there was no such thing as a floppy disk anymore. But what I'm finding is there's quite a few things that still run on floppy disk. One, one worries me a little bit. Tell me. The Boeing 747. Isn't that crazy to hear? I don't know why it worries me. I guess because in my mind, a floppy disk is outdated. Yeah. And I want the latest technology when I'm in a plane, but Boeing knows what they're doing. The floppies work well for Chuck E. Cheese. Why not Boeing 747s? I mean, Scott's a fan of, what is it, Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, we had my son's, uh, was it sixth or seventh birthday party there? And I was just enthralled by all the animatronics because I think I had a birthday party there years ago when I was a kid. And, yeah, it was fun. But uh, to think the old floppy disk yeah. is still alive and well is is pretty interesting. Hey, it takes care of your birthday parties now at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> right. Oh, it makes me so laugh because I can just see Scott. All kids have gone, you know, gotten their coins. They're playing the games. And Scott is just mouth open, jaw dropped. And he's like, oh, this is the best show I've ever seen. I'm just jamming front row. Yeah. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Back in Germany in November, they have math. Of course, they have English. They have German. They have now happiness. They teach happiness. They have an entire class on happiness. 
I think it's awesome. Yeah, they have this like happiness garden and they yeah. have little flowers and they write these happy sayings on the flowers of paper flowers in this paper garden of happiness. Yeah. So what they're saying is, you know, especially over the last couple of years, um, there's been more anxiety, more depression, even in the youngest of children that they've seen. And so, you know, they were brainstorming. How are we going to try to offset this a little bit? And so somebody came up with, let's try a happiness class. And so it just grew and grew and grew. And so it's now being uh, probably added to a regular curriculum. This started in one little town. But it's now starting to filter out into the area and to other schools. Oh, around the globe. Yeah. Because now there's some happiness classes that are starting in the U.S. And even a university has a happiness type of course. I think it's awesome. I, you know, anything that we can do to combat uh, what has been happening, you know, in, in younger people. And, and honestly, you know, I wouldn't mind taking a course in it just well, to listen, see. Listen, mental health is a thing. Yeah. And a lot of people are battling right now. Mm -hmm. And so and, and it's hard to really grasp what happiness is all about. I mean, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is Absolutely. your strength, right? right? And so there's something to it. So yeah. might as well allow it to be taught. So let's do it. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. You know, when they say that they say that it's not <laughs> real. Yeah. They say this. Like who? who's they? They. <laughs> somebody who did some kind of study. And they say, and I don't believe it. Can I say that up front, yeah. that I don't believe this? I Actually, I don't want to believe this. I don't want to accept this. I want to reject this. What is it? Water bottles. Mm -hmm. This is disgusting. It is. It's nasty. They say water bottles has more bacteria than your toilet. I totally reject that and don't believe it. That's just gross. And, and I mean, they go as far as to say the toilet seat. I mean... No, no. How? No, no, and it's, no. It's no. not like the water bottle you go into the convenience store and you get the plastic water bottle. These are the ones that we keep at home. Yeah, you reuse. Yes, that you know? you, you don't necessarily get all the way up into because you would. You would have to take like a new toothbrush or a Q-tip or something to reach this, the very edges of everything. Come on, these these dishwashers today. Right. They they scrape paint off walls. And paint off your your water bottle. Coffee mugs yeah. too. I mean, I've I've destroyed many a coffee mug outside because yeah. of a. But it's clean. Dishwash. It it's clean. It might look busted up, but it's clean. It's horrible looking. But yeah. I reject this. I don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I don't want to test it. That's the thing. I ain't never gonna test it. I'm just gonna believe like like Rob's believing. Yeah. That it's clean. I'm still gonna drink out of it. I'm not, not the toilet. No. The no. Water no.